when you would like to schedule a Microsoft Teams meeting and include your Microsoft Teams room, it is very easy. All you need to do is schedule a new meeting or appointment. And when you schedule that, you need to know what is the email address or the resource account of the room you're including. Now, one of the things you might be using is a, a room integration, or in this demo, we'll just be using an email address. So for the first one, for meeting one, this will be a Teams meeting. I'll select Teams meeting. And what I will then do is include everything and everyone. So in this demo, I'm not going to include other participants, but where it says required, you will then put in the people's email addresses that you included. And lastly, you will include your boardroom. And all you need to do from there is press send. Or, as I mentioned, you can select room finder here and then include the room from there if you're not sure about the availability. So right now, I'm going to schedule a meeting actually for 7, 7.30. And I'm going to send it off to the room. But I'm also going to schedule another meeting, be that a meeting scheduled or a meeting you've received. Meeting number two will be a Zoom meeting. So I will select meeting two. Oops. Two, and this will be a Zoom meeting. I'm just putting it in brackets, Teams and Zoom, so that you know the difference when we go to the touch controller. And I'll add a Zoom meeting to this environment. I will then also include people I would like to, to join. And in this case, oops, there, there, let's just go back there. I'll include the boardroom. And I'm going to send that off. So let's see what it looks like when you're walking back to the boardroom. Our boardroom, what you'll see is in this case, there's two screens and a touch controller on the desk. All you need to worry about is the touch controller on the desk, but I'll show you what all of these um, functions would do. So when you walk into the boardroom, all you need to do is just Click on the join button and you'll be into the call. So let's go to the touch controller so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you'll see meeting one is a Teams meeting and meeting two is a Zoom meeting. More than that, what you'll see is also at the top right of where the meeting is scheduled, there's a Teams icon and then there's a Zoom icon. The same would be true if there is a WebEx meeting. So this will give you one click to join into these calls. Zoom and WebEx is a guest join access so you'll join as a guest into the meeting but you'll be able to see all the participants and have a bunch of features available so other features on the touch controller you'll see there's a meet call present and a more option meet will allow you to start a meeting immediately or will allow you to dial somebody on a mobile or PSTN line. Present will allow you to just plug in your HDMI and share content. Now this might work in two ways depending on how your IT has configured it. It could either be automatically start sharing content or it could be that you need to pre present once you've connected the HDMI. So let's look at the first one and before I'm going to join I'm just going to switch back to the boardroom view so that you can see exactly when I click on that join button what will happen? So if I click on join, what you'll see is a call connecting. And on the one side right now, you will see I am in the call. I'm the only person into this call and the only person in this meeting. If more people would join, 
and then more people will be displayed. And if content's being shared, that will then be displayed. So this is the only thing I'm going to show on this piece for now. I'm going to put more focus on the touch controller because that's where we, we will see all the settings. So if we then go to the touch controller, you will see I am the person that has scheduled the meeting. And let's just readjust the screen a bit. So as you can see there, we have a bunch of controls here at the bottom, a bunch of features we can change. And for the first moment, I am going to skip the left one because I need to switch back to the other mode so you can see the changes. But what is possible from the touchscreen? Now, if I look at the touchscreen, I've got features like raising of hand. I've got emojis I can respond by. So if I raise my hand, the boardroom will have a raised hand and the other participants will be able to see it. I can then lower my hand again. I can also react to any of things that I want to share. And I'll do that reaction again on the other screen so you can see exactly what has happened. I can switch things on like live captions, don't show chat bubbles, turn off incoming video, turn off room remote, or report a problem. So turn on live captions gives me the capability to see and read what somebody else is saying. Don't show chat bubbles gives me a capability not to have a pop-up on the window and that I basically hide um, any of those chats, and I'll show you that. Turn off incoming video. This might be because your network is struggling and you want to save some bandwidth. Turn off room remote. This is a feature that I'll show in a video later, but that's basically using my cell phone as a remote control in the room, and I can report a problem. Now, I'll play around with these settings back into the other view. I just want to give you the view of the touch controller first. Another feature I've got is I can lower or make the volume higher or I can totally mute the incoming audio because I'm trying to concentrate on something in the room. I've got the capability to turn off the camera, turn it back on, mute and unmute and I can also pull. So after ending the call, I am back at the features that I mentioned, meet, call, present. So let's go back to the boardroom view. So in the boardroom view, once I've joined the call, I have mentioned there is a bunch of features I've, I can have available. So if I then go to all of these features, what you'll be able to do is, I just want to join from here for a moment. So as I mentioned, one of the features is you can turn on live captions. Live captions will give you the capability to read any of the incoming text. Like you see there now, saying Happening Hub is now capturing those details. So you're able to at least see what somebody's saying. If you've got bad network quality, if you've got somebody that um, cannot hear, or for whatever reason you would want to read any of the text. Then I can switch it back off if I really want to. Another feature that I mentioned is emojis. So like right there, you'll see the love sign coming up on the screen. And that's because I've reacted and I don't want to speak. Maybe I'm a shy person. Maybe I don't want to speak. So you can just create the reactions from there. Further to that, 
I also mentioned that I could have raising of hands. You'll see there's a yellow line uh, around my name. And the reason for that is that you won't necessarily see that on the call. This is just because I'm the only person in the call. But the far side would especially see that it's the same as it, it would work in your team's meetings. I can then also hand again. Another feature that I mentioned is I can then switch off the camera if I wanted to hide my camera or I could switch off a remote participant's camera. And the last feature I said I'm not going to show on the other side, but I want to show it on this side is basically changing the bottom left one that we showed at the beginning. And that gives me the capability to do a whole lot of things, especially the new feature that will be coming called front row. The front row gives me the capability to meet with everybody together. As you can see in our instance that we've got raised hands, we've got a presentation not being shared. We've got a bunch of those features, but I guess what you ultimately want to do with the front row experience is really give that information through to everybody, but also include everybody. It's not an excluded environment, it's an included environment. So in a front row environment, while it's in preview mode, you need to go and enable that, but I thought it's important enough to at least start showing what it would look like. The other feature that I've mentioned is join, but from a Zoom call. So it is exactly the same as with the first initial one where we joined the team school. But we'll just click on the second meeting that was there on Zoom. I'll just click join. Now because this is a guest access Zoom meeting, I need to be admitted in to the call so that I can be part of the call, be that from my own laptop that I'm joining or wherever I'm admitting it from. As you can see, there's only one screen active in this instance. And then on the touch controller, which I'll show to you, you've got all of these features available. So I can, as an example, um, show meeting on, on this device. So all the settings I've got available in the front screen, I can then go accept that. I'm waiting for the meeting to start. So that's why you'll be sitting in the screen. So nothing is wrong. It's just you have to wait for it to start. Or I can just leave it as a control panel. And I just have that display back to the boardroom. So I was just mimicking from the front of the room. And I'll just redo that on this screen. So basically, what I've got is if I press on show meeting on this device, I've got any features I would want to have on that screen available from here. Or I can go back to just having the control from here. And then I can just leave that call. And in the instance where you would want to just start a meeting from here, you can click on the meet button and it will in immediately initiate a meeting. I'll just do that again so that you can have the experience if that was from touch panel only. So if I go back to touch control screen, if I click on meet, it will start the meeting and I've got all my meeting controls available. And if we go back to the boardroom again, the next feature that you could do from here is click on call. And immediately from here, I can type a name to call or I can then just type a mobile number if you've got voice breakouts. And then the last few settings available to you is I can invite this room, access, accessibility. If something is wrong, you can restart it. And you won't have access to the settings because that will be for your administrator to do changes to the room or anything they would want to do from there. And you'll see if you click on invite the room, it will tell you 
You need to open up your calendar, go to Outlook on your personal device, add this room to the field, and then send the update. If the meeting is accepted, it will appear on the room calendar shortly, depending on your network speed, a minute or two, and then you can just join calendar. Or you can go to your Microsoft Teams, not your Outlook, join the meeting from your personal device, open the roster, search for the room name on the console, and invite it to the meeting. Answer the call from the console. So these are some ways you could join the call.